Hi, I'm Mark Rosano, founder and CEO of C6 Capital Holdings, coming to you from Primary Vision Network. Today, we're going to go through the EIA. We're going to break it down into our normal parts in terms of overview, uh, refined products, and then it exports in global market. So before we get into that, we'd like to just remind you, please like, share, subscribe. You know, all your support is, is a huge help and, and your comments have always been fantastic. So we love the back and forth. So now, uh, you know, now that we've gone through the uh, preliminary, let's jump right in. And here you can see that there was a, uh, a small build of about 770,000 in commercial stock. But then once we factor in the strategic petroleum reserve, there was only a build of 360,000. Now you can see that the biggest uh, draws really came from pad five and, and pad five is going to be interesting now that we have new, renewed lockdowns in California. Now, just as a reminder, pad five is the West coast. So as we start looking out and we, and we consider what's happening within the way West coast, and as we have some rolling lockdowns coming out, you know, I can speak from just, you know, anecdotally from this point that the hospitals here are starting to see uh, cases creeping higher, which is unfortunate because, you know, realistically, it really comes down to what does the infrastructure look like when we start considering restrictions, lockdowns and, uh, and the like. So the, when, we, when we're looking at this, you know, the, as we start to kind of break down the different data points, Pad 2, you know, Cushing had a big build. Pad 2, the Midwest had a, had a big build. Pad 3 is more of just kind of that normalizing now that we start to see, uh, you know, the Gulf of Mexico fully online. Here you can see production was up 400,000. Again, that was just those timing delays in terms of where those barrels are actually kind of allocated. Now, t technically, the the EIA has production at eleven point one, so we should see another two hundred thousand coming into uh, uh, two hundred thousand a day coming into production. I, I would say that we're probably closer to here, but again, it's just going to be kind of semantics as to where that production is actually uh, recognized. Now, when we start looking at okay, let's break it out. Let's kind of look at what's happening over the the next. Um, the next uh, few data points here you can see this is the total inventory including the SPR so again you can see we've just kind of flattened out there's really not much happening in terms of drawdowns in terms of just kind of this normalization because even though we had some builds it was really just driven based on some specific locations but we do have refinery utilization rates finally starting to turn around you know we were expecting kind of one percent last week one percent this week instead we had a small dip and then we had a big spike again it's just going to kind of be those timing delays but we'll go through that in a bit more detail now this is just looking at total inventories now before we we go into kind of anything else we just want to look at okay well let's look at cushing because cushing you can see is is continued to build Right now, Cushing is at 61.6 uh, million barrels in storage. And just to kind of put that into context, and, and given, you know, you can see how quickly we got there. On April 24th, we were at 63.4. At May, May 1st, we were at 65.5. And then on May 8th, we were at 62.4. So that was when we had these this big shakeup. But again, it's just a matter of what is going to happen going forward in terms of rolling lockdowns. Will we see these declines, which we're going to go through in, in, a, in way more detail in section two, uh, part two. So here, when we when we take out the SPR and we look at commercial storage, we're still at that seasonally adjusted all time high. But again, we're we're right at the top of the cloud. So it's really not like we were as when you look at April, as we went from March into May. You know, we're we're just kind of hanging around with really not much telling me that we're going to see too much of a dip. It's just a matter of how flat can we keep this curve as we go th into a um, what should be a higher demand point. The problem that we're facing now, the weather, and again, talking weather is always questionable, but when we start looking at weather and we start considering heating demand, you know, those degree days continue to fall, which is just going to put us some weight in terms of where our, our uh, diesel and heating oil demand is really going to be. So then when we look at crude oil inventories, you know, we, they started to shift higher again, like they're top of the cloud. Uh, there's, you know, just based on Gulf of Mexico now normalizing, you know, we're, we're, we technically or at least hopefully should be at the end of a hurricane season as we've set a record for named storms in the Atlantic and uh, Gulf of Mexico. 
But as we so now without those disruptions in the Gulf of Mexico, we should start to see these these uh, inventories increase, and we'll start to see an increase in imports as well. Just as we get some uh, refinery utilization rates picking up specifically in uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. So then when we look at imports, again, the, the ones that we've been looking at the most have really been pad two and pad three, just because pad two has seen a, a decent drawdown from, uh, from Canada. Pad three was a, was a small increase, but again, it, the small increase was really kind of paired with a reactivation of refiners. Pad two, again, some, something similar in terms of those refinery utilization rates. This is something that's going to be a little lumpy. The, the biggest question that we have, and, it, and we keep going kind of back and forth with where the data is going to shake out, is really pad five in the West Coast. Because based on what we're seeing, there should be an increase in imports, but is some of this going to stay offshore just because refinery runs continue to be a problem? You know, Valero has talked about reducing an additional facility in uh, Louisiana. And it's just going to be a question of, you know, where where does the activity really come from? So the way we're looking at this, and, and that kind of leads us into, into the next part, when we start looking at runs, you know, as we said last week, we, we were expecting to see an increase of about 300,000 or so in pad three, we got 307. You know, we think there's going to be another increase in pad three. And realistically, we should start to see some drawdowns or, or rollbacks in pad five. It's just going to be a matter of is it this week? Is it next week? Is it the week after? It's, there's going to be some timing delays in terms of kind of when some of this comes through. Our our net target is 80% utilization rates. You know, our view was that we were going to see last uh, you know last week we thought we were going to see about a 1% increase. Instead, we had a small decline of about 0.8. And here you can see that we had a, a big jump of about 3%. And, and again, that's, that's really kind of just bringing us back into kind of where we think the normalcy will be as we go through the end of November and into December, that instead of getting back to where we normally are, it'll just kind of sit at this 80% level. So there's still some, some to go, about 2.5% additional to come on. And that 2.5% is really going to be split fairly evenly, we, we would say, across pad three and uh, pad two, depending on, you know, kind of where this... Um, where that heating demand really comes from, because that's where we're going to see some of that distillate moving into the system. You know, implied demand, as we were saying, gasoline was, again, lumpy. You know, Descart was down another 2%. The uh, DOT, or the Department of Transportation, was down 3%. You know, Gas Buddy, as we'll talk about in, in, uh, in Section 2, was down about 1.7%. Again, so... We, we kept saying that it, it's just a timing delay, like there's just going to be some movements back and forth. So here is, is that movement down in terms of that gasoline move. Now, as we head into what should be a big driving season, a, a big driving uh, point, which is Thanksgiving, we think that there's going to be a, a, a disappointment to the downside in terms of the amount of stuff people are going to do and the driving that's going to happen. So that's going to be a problem overall. Distillate did have an, a nice uh, jump in demand again. You know, this was something that we were expecting to see kind of that, that, that shift down after we saw some of this move through the system. Didn't happen. You know, something that we're going to talk about in a bit more detail uh, in, in, uh, in segment two when we start looking at trucking and rail as well as shipping. Uh, jet fuel did what we were expecting in terms of the kind of that spike and fade, you know, as, as again, refi as uh, refiners got, got jet fuel to the airports, you know, the, uh, the airlines, you know, making sure that they can prep for what they expect to be uh, given a, a, a down traveling season with Thanksgiving, but again, still more travel than, than, than we have seen, you know, propane again, same thing. It's, it's just gonna, it's the demand is there just because we have, I, I mean, I don't know if you've gone to the re to a restaurant but everybody has a propane heater that could get a propane heater and they're going to need more especially as the, as it starts to get cooler in specific regions and then not only just that but you we also have you know a lot of uh, exports that are, that remain robust especially into India so these are things that are going to keep propane uh, relatively bid in terms of uh, in in terms of just general demand as we go through the remainder of the year so just looking at floating storage, zero. Uh, the, again, the, there's there we have more ships signaling in the into the into the U.S., which would come through the Gulf of Mexico. It's just a matter of when they come, are they immediately getting getting pulled into the system? Do they have to wait? There's a lot of different pieces that are happening to this because you're only 
designated a, um, a floating storage when you're sitting there for seven days. So right now, that just means that people are moving around. There's a lot of sh there's a, a lot of activity. So this is something that is just currently at zero. Now, when we look at imports into Pad three, as we talked about last week, we expected to to fall within the bottom of the cloud. And again, it's just going to pair closely with refinery utilization rates. So as you, as Pad three refinery utilizations increase, so will imports, be, just because of the blends that have to be created. Uh, just because we, we need heavy crude to come into the market in order for these uh, facilities to operate appropriately. So this is something that's going to continue to creep higher. Again, nothing, nothing taking us to, to the, to the, uh, to that five-year average, but it's just a matter of just kind of bumping along the bottom and really kind of uh, that trend, as you can see, the slope starting to shift higher. We just think that that trend is going to continue at, on an imports level into uh, pad three. Into pad two, you know, we were saying that we were going to fall closer to the five-year average. We thought we would stay a little bit above it. And instead, we went right to the five-year average. Again, it's something that we think is going to remain above that five-year and just kind of bounce back and forth just because imports are always a little lumpy. So we have to just look at the trend, and, and the trend has been up, and we just think it's going to continue to shift higher, especially as more crude comes into from Canada into the uh, into not only pad two, but also pad three for an export uh, into the export market. So just uh, last last uh, data point when we before we jump into uh, segment two is just the refinery utilization rates. Again, you can see going back over the last thirty years, you know how how low we are, but again we're we are moving back to those highs. You know, you can see that we're now right at that high that we had at the call at the middle uh, of the close to the end of September. We're going to continue to kind of take that out. We should be able to get to about the bottom of that cloud just because again, 80% is 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 where we're we're thinking we're going to be able to maintain and the reason why 80 cuz it's not just a magic number that we're looking at. It's a matter of what is demand going to look like in the US? Where is storage in the U.S.? And then what are exports look like? And exports, we think, are going to continue to struggle just given what the uh, floating market looks like in the international market. We think that rolling, uh, rolling lockdowns is the more likely case as we go through the remainder of not only November but into December, which is going to put a, a relative lid in terms of what gasoline uh, demand or cap can be in terms of gasoline demand. And then when we look at diesel, it, there were, there's going to be some uh, competing uh, pieces to that. There's going to be obviously trucking, rail, but at the same time, heating is going to be that, that overarching issue because right now we just don't have the temperatures to really see a, a big spike in that heating demand in the near term. So those are things that are going to kind of keep us you know, within this uh, a fairly uh, capped utilization rates. I mean, we could, could we go to 81%? Sure. You know, this is something that we think that we're just going to kind of average that 80% as we go through the remainder of the year. And then as we get into uh, January, then we'll start to see some of these uh, other issues because what has happened in Europe, you know, what are cases look like in Europe? What is mobile? Uh, what does mobility look like? It, it has Asia seen a resurgence of some of these um, cases, you know, there's a lot of questions that that are still remain out there that we'll talk about, not only in segment two, but also in segment three.